I think one thing that was important to us was this idea of um, empathy and understanding between different groups of people. There's a very polarising way of being at the moment where people sit on either side of their fence. This game is about trying to help people understand the position of another person. Fixing the physical with the tools that you understand, but also fixing the emotional with tools that we all struggle with on a day-by-day -day basis. The objects that you repair are mostly from the 80s and 90s. We use nostalgia to make people relate to things that they might have given up on. And when I talk about that, I don't only mean old objects, but also your relationships. In the very early days, our goal was to find interactions that would feel juicy and interesting. It is all about playing around with these objects that you know from real life, but that just feel a little bit better in the game. <laughs> idealized version yeah, of the object. It's not exactly the object. It's yeah. just the best version that you could remember. The player is Maria, who's a restless young woman who fixes things out of her parents' antique shop. One day, a battered old suitcase comes into the shop. It's got scratches and bumps all over it. So she decides to pack all of her belongings into this suitcase and go on a new adventure. In the game, we explore two different relationships, one between a father and a daughter, and one between two sisters who couldn't be more different. It's really interesting to try and explore the relationships that are presented in the game through the imperfections and condition of each object. As Maria, you're asking a lot of questions about the objects that you're being presented with. How were they broken? Were they broken deliberately? There's always a link between what we're doing as players, how we're interacting with these objects, the ways that we can bring them back to life, and the actual stories of the characters themselves and the relationships that they're trying to bring back together. There's a saying that one man's trash is another man's treasure. And to a certain extent, I think it's that feeling that we're exploring. Some of the objects that are presented in the game are really run of the mill, they're really everyday, but the importance that they hold in the stories of the characters is actually quite profound. So you'll have things like the cassette deck, which Everyone will have had cassette decks, but the fact that this one is the only way that a young girl can hear the voice of her mother again is really important. There is a version of this game that could have been, you know, 100 levels long and it could just be circuitry. It always ends up being a lot more meaning, but much shorter than the very functional one that we could have made. And oftentimes it comes down to wanting to leave memories with people, kind of like the objects they've left people with lasting memories. And our hope is that we can make a game that leaves the players with lasting memories as well. Um.